gamers, I'm Hunter. And I'm Lauren. And you're tuning into the best gaming channel on Twitch. Chubby Cheese Balls! Today, we're continuing our playthrough of Exodus 2. And we've decided to kick it up a notch. That's right. Exodus 2 comes with three different levels of play. Beginner, Pro, and Holy Moses, this is hard. Now, Hunter and I are no beginners, so we've set to pro ever, wait, oh, we've set on pro ever since we started. But today we decided we need a little more of a challenge. And as soon as we switched to challenge in mode, God asked us to climb the on the top of uh, the mountain. He could have a word with us. Okay, I thought the mountain would give us some trouble, but it was a piece of cake. And ever since we got here, God's been giving us as these new rules for the game. Love God, honor your parents, don't steal, don't lie, don't commit murder, all good stuff. But I'm not seeing the challenge here. Me either. It's just God writing all these rules on tablets about honoring God and loving others. Oh, hey, he's done now. He is? That's it. I guess we better head down the mountain now. What was that God said about the people disobeying him already? I don't know, but I can't imagine what they would be doing after all God has done for them. What on earth could they have been doing? Oh my goodness, Lauren, look. What the what? They've made a giant golden statue, a statue of a horse with a snake on its head. That's not a horse with a snake on its head. It's a calf. Uh, the, those are its horns. Oh, yeah. But why are they bo bowing down and worshiping it? Hey, what are you people doing? We just got d down talking to God. And he said, we cannot worship idols. Hunter, I think this may be our challenge. We have to fight the golden calf? No, we have to stand up for God's laws. We have to do the right thing and show everybody else what, it, what the right thing is. That's not going to be easy, Lauren. There's only two of us and there's there are many of them. How is that any different than us standing up against peer pressure at school or refusing to cuss on our videos or going to church on Sunday when everyone else is online playing. I guess you're right, Lauren. I know I'm right. God's way is not easy, but the right, but it is the right way to go. It's a challenge, but it's nothing new to us. And it's a challenge we can win with God's help. Fans, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons and join us next time on Chubby, Chubby Cheese Balls! What do you do when it's just you and a controller and a headset? When mom and dad aren't in the room and you have the voices of other players in your ear? How do you act? How do you speak? Would someone who listens to you play video games think that you were just like everyone else? Or would they hear someone who doesn't swear, doesn't talk trash, and seems to be a little bit different. Now, it's hard to be the only one who does the right thing. It's hard to keep on following God's rules when everyone else wants to break them. Now, it's a real challenge to live for Jesus, and it's always been that way. The good news is people have gone against the flow and lived for God since the very beginning. And so it can be done. We can do it. And when we follow God instead of the world, God can use us to share Jesus with others. So make a commitment to obey God. Make a commitment to do things his way. God's way is always right, even when it's not easy. God can help us to stay right. You know, some video games have different levels of play, different levels of challenge, and these games offer easier gameplay for younger and less experienced players. And then a more challenging level of play 
for advanced gamers. Creating multiple levels of gameplay allows more people to enjoy these games. Casual gamers would get discouraged and shut the game off if it was too hard. And advanced gamers wouldn't waste their time on a game that wasn't a challenge. It's just unfortunate life doesn't give us the option of changing the challenge level, like video games do. You know, life can be challenging, especially for those of us who call ourselves Christians, and that would be Christ followers. We follow Christ. We've been given the challenge of living for God in a world that has chosen sin. They've chosen to do the things that God does not want them to do. Every day we're faced with challenges to our faith. We're pressured to break the rules, to be selfish, to go our own way. And I think all of us who have been following God for any length of time have found ourselves in the same position as Moses in today's scripture reading. God's Commandments, based on Exodus 20. While the people of Israel stand before Mount Sinai, God speaks from the mountain and gives them the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord your God. You must not worship other gods. You must not make any idols. You must not use the name of the Lord your God wrongly. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Respect your father and your mother. You must not murder. You must not cheat on your husband or wife. You must not steal. You must not lie. You must not be jealous of others' possessions. A Golden Calf, based on Exodus 32. God gives Moses more laws, and then these are written down. Moses builds an altar. He and his people make an agreement or covenant with God. The people promise to follow all of the Lord's commands. Later, God calls Moses to come again to Mount Sinai, where he will give Moses the law written on the stone tablets. Joshua goes part way with him. Days pass and Moses does not return. When is he coming back? Can we go look for him? We don't know when Moses will be back, but you must not follow him up the mountain. He is alone with God. Who knows? Maybe Moses isn't coming back. If he doesn't come back, what will we do? Let's ask Aaron to let us make a statue to worship. Yes, we want a God we can see. Feeling lost without their leader, the people forget God's commandments and their promise to worship only God. They bring their jewelry to Aaron, who melts it and makes a golden statue of a calf. It looks just like one of the gods our neighbors worshipped in Egypt. Tomorrow will be a feast day. We will worship our new God then. Early the next morning, the people bring their offerings to the altar before the golden calf. They eat and drink and dance with joy. But while the people are celebrating, Moses comes down the mountain with the tablets on which God has written the Ten Commandments. On the way, he meets Joshua. Listen, Moses it sounds like war in our camp. No, I hear singing, don't you? Moses can't believe what he sees. How dare you cheat God? You promised to worship only God and already you are worshiping the statue of a calf? Shocked by the sight of Moses breaking the stone tablets, the people stop worshiping the calf. What will Moses do to us. Aaron, who made this idol? It's not my fault. The people gave me their gold. I just threw it into the fire and out came this golden calf. Then throw it back into the fire. Moses melts the idol, grinds up the gold, and dumps it into the river. Now, all of you, drink this water. Drink it? Oh, it's awful. Oh, this will make us sick. Just drink it. Let this be a lesson to you. Ponder your faithlessness while I go back up the mountain and ask God to forgive you.
high on the mountain where he received God's commandments, Moses kneels to pray. These are all stubborn, rebellious people. Leave me, Moses, so I may destroy them. Please, Lord, forgive them. You promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob I will bless their descendants. I know they don't deserve it, but if you destroy desert if you destroy them, the other nations will think that you can't fulfill your promises. Back in camp, the people pray for their Moses' safe return. They hope beyond hope that the Lord will forgive them, but when they see Moses coming down the mountain, they are terrified. It's Moses, but look at his face. It's as bright as the sun. The glory of having been with God shines on Moses' face. He covers his face with a veil so that the people will not be frightened. Don't be afraid. God has forgiven you. Moses has been with God for 40 days. And during those 40 days, God gave him the Ten Commandments, the ten foundational rules that teach us how to love God and love other people. This, God says, is how we are to act if we want to be followers of God. Meanwhile, down at the bottom of the mountain, Moses' brother has been busy building an idol so that the people can worship a golden calf instead of God. And odds are we'll never be challenged to worship something as silly as a golden calf, but we are challenged to worship many false idols. Fame, popularity, celebrities, money, power, possessions. We were all born with a hole in our hearts that only God can fill. And yet the world will try to fill it with anything but God. The world wants us to go along with their plan to forget God's ways and go our own way. Following God is not always easy, but it is always right. If we study God's word and hide it in our hearts, we can do the right thing, even when it's hard. We can be faithful Christians and good examples for everyone around us. And it's easy to see right and wrong reading this passage from afar, from a distance. But over the last four weeks, we've seen God perform three huge miracles for these ungrateful people. And yet the moment Moses is gone, they start worshiping a false idol. It's easy to judge them for their unfaithfulness, but how many times have we just been as unfaithful? It's so much easier to do things the world's way. It's easier to cuss or swear with everyone else when we're playing games online. It's easy to laugh along when people are gossiping in the lunchroom about that kid who sits by themselves. It's surprisingly easy to fall in with a group of friends who are doing something you know is wrong. And it's much easier to go along with the gang than it is to take a stand, to say, this isn't right, and walk away. God's way is always right, and it's our daily challenge to live God's way. God wants us to honor him first by worshiping him alone. He wants us to put him first ahead of all other things. And God wants us to act in a way that blesses others rather than harm them. He wants us to speak kindly, to act justly, to stand up for the weak, to love everyone. When we take up the challenge to live God's way, we set ourselves apart. Some people might mock us, but others will take note of our courage. They'll see that the faith we proclaim with our mouths is real, and God can use our faithfulness to lead them into a relationship with Jesus. No, it's not easy to live in challenge mode, but God's way is always right. So let's choose God's way. Let's live the challenge instead of doing things the easy way. Let's become witnesses who help others to see that God's way might not be easy, but it is right. Okay, let's close with a little prayer. Dear Jesus, help us to obey you always. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen.